All right, man, have I ever been looking forward to getting this motor yanked out of here and put on a stand. It's also time to start getting into this uh, big bowl of spaghetti here. I um, have been putting this off a little bit, but I'm just going to start going through and just removing, you know, any sort of things that I can just to keep it simple. But uh, really looking forward to getting this motor out of here today. All right, first cable is out of there. Um, I'm going to label everything. I'm going to go through all of it. Uh, I'm going to spare you guys the excruciating detail of this, but everything will be removed and labeled and then uh, kept nice and clean and safe in this box. So here's step one. All right, we are making progress. Well, you know, there's still a bit of junk around there, but the main harness is now uh, coiled up there, as you can see by all the blue tape. Um, pretty much all of the ends are uh, labeled. There's a couple of things that are, uh, um, you know, going to make for a good mystery when I put it all back together. But uh, I will be remaking all that stuff, so it'll be a very slow, painstaking process. I was actually expecting this bin to be... Uh, you know, like half full with all that wiring crap that was over there, but it actually um, isn't terrible. As you can see, everything's labeled and stuff, so hopefully I can get it back together without too much shenanigans. Um, I've gone ahead and uh, prepared this to be pulled out. Uh, all these ends are disconnected and then just taped off to keep the junk out of there. And, uh, you know, there'll probably be a couple of little surprises. I'll have to disconnect that fuel line there. Um, this is the return coming off of the injection pump and the return coming off the injectors and then this of course goes back to the tank. There's two different ways you can unhook this motor. Uh, first of all, you can remove um, you can remove those bolts there and then uh, the motor mounts will kind of come up with the engine. Um, but I need to slide it forward to get it off the dowel pins on the transmission. So what I'm going to do here is actually disconnect the mount from the block. We're on the passenger side now, so I also had to do these two bolts here, which go to the uh, transmission heat exchanger. So uh, this side's ready to pull. Just going to do the mounts on the other side and then disconnect the transmission itself and uh, should be good to go. All those of you that have uh, pulled one of these things out from the bottom will know that this kind of access is definitely uh, quite a luxury. So I'm enjoying it right now. This is about as easy as it gets. All the bell housing bolts are out. I've got the uh, crane here with just a little bit of pressure. I'll put a little bit more on that. Here we go. Just a bit. I've got the cranny cooler lines that go uh, up into this heat exchanger. I've got those disconnected. Well, I realized that I forgot to disconnect the torque converter from the flex plate. Uh, I was thinking that it was going to be hard to do from the bottom, but I've actually got this hole here. I've pulled the plug out, and that's where the barring tool goes in. And then uh, that little cover right behind it is uh, where you actually disconnect the uh, the bolts that go between the two. So I think I can actually do this uh, not too bad. Luckily, I've got this great access. I'm used to doing it from the bottom, but uh, I think this is going to work out well. So we'll see how it goes here. Okay, so the last thing i got to do is... Uh Torque converter bolts are out and I should be able to uh, separate the engine and transmission now. Okay, these things are separated. I'm now going to try and very gently back up and remove the engine. Uh, I definitely don't want to jostle that torque converter out of there. So just going to go slow, bit by bit, and uh, be able to put this thing on a stand. Ah, it is nice to see that thing floating in the air. That is a 12 valve Cummins sitting there. 100% intact. Now, this is not something that you see very often, uh, unless the cab's removed or whatever, but uh, when I had this engine out, um, the only way you could get it out was remove the oil pan because it sits very close to that cross member there. And then I'm pretty sure you pull the cover and then the two rocker covers, and I think maybe the rocker pedestals because both of those kind of sit here underneath the uh, firewall or the cowl or whatever and you will notice right up in here this thing's very tattered but that's how you actually get the uh, push rods out is uh, you put them up this hole and then move them out so very tight squeeze this engine sitting in there this thing is freshly rebuilt and um, unfortunately I've got some scoring on the cylinder walls so time is going to tell if I can uh, just hone those uh, cylinders and 
sort of get them good enough or if I'm gonna have to get this thing bored out 20 over which means new pistons and rings and all that kind of stuff. I have uh, tried to remove this entire engine as a complete unit just to really show uh, every single step uh, that goes into uh, dismantling it down to a bare block. Normally I would have pulled off the fan, you know, the alternator and uh, probably the AC condenser and obviously left that with the truck with all the lines. Uh, I would have pulled the turbos and the manifold and then I probably, I think last time, just to make it easy, I even pulled the head off and then that way there's a lot more room I think that's what I did actually last time. I pulled the head off and then used a load leveler uh, into the block itself and uh, lifted it up and that way I didn't have to pull the pan off. But either way, uh, I just really wanted to uh, pull this out as one complete unit for the next video and I'm really looking forward to doing that. I have gone ahead and tried to plug every single opening just to keep the crud out of there. Right now I'm gonna pull this flex plate off and then I'll pull off this little mounting casting, whatever you wanna call this here. And then I'll put the uh, engine stand right into the actual block. Flex plate is removed. That is the crankshaft right there that it would connect to. Now I'm gonna pull off this uh, mounting case bracket thing and then I'll uh, put the um, engine stand right on the actual block itself. got that off now I can attach the engine stand right directly to the block and everything should be nice and strong I'm gonna have to pull off this Michigan Motorsports killer frost plug delete for those holes is where the engine stand is gonna be going I got the mounting plate on here it's gonna go ahead and uh, attach to the frame and then this little bugger will be sitting on an engine stand normally I would do this on a load leveler but because of these uh, convenient hooks here and the fact that I am uh, trying to you know keep it as a complete engine this is a bit of a different setup than I would normally do but I've got the mounting plate on and then I've actually put that through the frame and this is still floating in the air but this way you don't have to screw around with trying to line it up um, while all the weights on it so it's much easier to just pick up the frame and uh, you know make it line up. So now it is ready to lower down and this old dog is going to be sitting on an engine stand. It's going to do this real slowly and down she goes. Okay, that baby is sitting there and ready to go. I'm going to yank out the training and transfer case. I have gone ahead and uh, disconnected the actual tranny mount from the cross member. So let's see if I and just lift this on up. If I had to do this all over again, I definitely would have drained this first. I also would have uh, removed the fuel tank and probably drained that before I lowered the truck down. Um, we're at a point now where I could pretty easily lift the frame, you know, up and put it on jack stands, but this is just one silly little step that should have been done. Well, engine, tranny, transfer case are out of there. Uh, I think it's now time to lift this frame back up. I mean, basically all I got until this is a bare frame is uh, brake lines, uh, the tank, and that is getting pretty much right down to it. I've got the uh, transmission and transfer case sitting up on the bench there. I've actually decided to not drain it. So I've got all the uh, lines and everything like that in there. I'm just gonna leave it as a complete unit for now. Uh, the transmission, everything is good to go on that, except for uh, it needs to be cleaned and painted and then the transfer case needs to be rebuilt. I have a rebuild kit and an ATSG manual for that. So, the next thing that needs to happen here is uh, I have got to lift the frame up, put it on some jack stands, probably jack stands on those wooden blocks, get it really up nice and high. Then I will drain the tank and uh, remove it. The next thing that I'll be doing is completely tearing this motor down. In the next video I will uh, show every single step. Uh, I'm not a mechanic so you're just going to have to treat this like entertainment. but. Uh, 
I have had this thing apart before and uh, I will strip it right down to a bare block again and uh, assess what my options are for uh, dealing with the scoring in the cylinders.